In this project, I'm going to be installing the Furion Vision S system in my RV. If any of you have seen my previous videos on backup cameras, you may know that I already have a Furion Vision 2, which used to be called, or is also called, the Observation Camera. Unfortunately, that is not compatible with the new system. So, along with the 7-inch monitor, I needed to buy a new camera for the backup. I also purchased a set of side cameras, so this is going to be a three camera system. So it's really an upgrade or a follow on video from the original set of videos I did on the Afurion Vision 2. All of the camera systems are subcomponents of the Vision S system. The single camera systems are available in a 4.3 inch, 5 inch, or 7 inch monitor and available with either the Shark Fin or the Marker Light rear camera. Multiple cameras are available in the 5 or 7 inch systems. The 5 inch system includes marker light cameras for the rear and side lights, and the 7 inch camera system is available in a 3 or a 4 camera system. The 3 camera system includes the same rear and side marker lights as a 5 inch camera, while the 4 camera system also includes a shark fin camera for the door. The 4.3 inch monitor is a single camera system only. The side marker cameras as well as the shark fin camera are available separately so you can custom build the system. As of this video publication, the rear marker light camera is not available as a separate product. And we have a little manual and a couple cameras here it looks like. And these are the left and right cameras. And the camera comes with a replacement clearance light. So basically the idea is to remove the original clearance light from your RV. Install this with a new clearance light. And we have the power leads. We have a camera, a clearance light, and a ground lead. So you could power the camera separately from the clearance light. Or what most people nowadays do, and manufacturers as well, is they power everything on the running lights. So you would in that case put the two positive wires together the one for the camera and the one for the running lights and that way the camera is powered by the running lights and I do see that there is a light bulb in here and it's unfortunate they didn't have LEDs in here and I don't really see any adjustability in the camera itself as far as the angle goes I believe these are infrared LEDs and in this box we have a monitor 7 inch and also looks like a manual and a couple different mounts. Air. And this looks like it's the backup camera. Some more air. The contents of the two boxes were the 7 inch screen, what's known as the shark fin backup camera, antenna for the camera. Some cable ties, a gland, a couple bags of screws, windshield mount, an inside mount, left and right rear view cameras, and some power cables, as well as manuals. And actually this is not going to be a very difficult procedure because all we have to do is replace the side markers and rewire these in their place. And if you remember in my previous videos, the manufacturer of my RV connected my backup camera to the hutch light and I'm going to take this opportunity to hook the backup camera to the rear red marker light that's about two inches above it to kind of give you an idea of how you could do that. Well the manual just says to put these into a suitable spot and I have a marker light about halfway down the RV and I have a marker light in the front. I'm not sure which of the two are the best locations but first I'm going to see if there's any obstructions by putting it here. When I put this in here, it'll just clear here. So I could put this in this location like that. And we have maybe a quarter to a half an inch of clearance under the door. And the other spot is here, which provides plenty of clearance. However, I don't know how much is going to be blocked by that awning. Let's check the other side and see if it's any better. And on this side, we have the slide out. 
And while that still gives us about a half inch of clearance, the slide out is going to block part of the view. And so to test to see which is the best spot for these, I've got the monitor set up here and then a the camera here. Now one thing that was interesting is when I first tried it, it would not pair until I actually turned the light on and there's a separate lead for the light and the camera. So that was kind of weird. What I'm going to do is set this and try to get it as flush as possible. And we got glare outside here, but you can kind of see just on the edge it's cut off, but the rest of it is okay. So I think this location would be okay. And that's what I'm going to try anyway to start with. And when I tried the right side camera here, this was not in the way at all. But when I tried it up here, that actually was more in the way than what the left side was next to the truck. So this is the biggest obstruction, so I'm going to avoid that. So the first step is to pry this off. We've got uh, one screw holding this on. And again, they drilled a hole here and they drilled a hole here. So I don't know what they think they're doing, but it takes a pretty poor installer to strip a piece of metal like that, I think. All right, and that's interesting that they use in these, uh, although they are waterproof. And I just happen to have some. And to install the new one, we had to pop the cover. We have to remove those two screws. Then it just comes apart like that. And one of the two things with this is if the wires are too small, then they're not going to crimp very well. And the other issue is you got to get this crimp pretty much parallel or else it can fail. So make sure that this goes in all the way. And we want to try to squeeze as parallel as we can. If this thing is not completely seated, then you're going to have trouble. And you can see in here, a little easier with the different colors, how they go in. And they got to be completely seated. If you have any trouble with these, make sure these are all the way in and that these are completely seated down. And you got to press on them pretty hard with a pair of pliers to get them to go in all the way. And so then I just uh, started with some tape and bundled the whole mess. And that thing will slide into a slot in the inner frame of the RV. There we go. So Then we can uh, slide our camera in from the side like that. And then we have a couple of screws that go into here. So we add the screws in and then just put the bezel on and that is done. In order to install the new shark fin, which is for the Vision S, and again this is a Vision 2, and I just need to remove this old one, then pop this and then wire from here to there, just that short space. So that's not going to be too hard. The siding is pretty thin, looks like maybe 1 16th of an inch fiberglass and a 1 8th inch Luan. So it doesn't take much to over drill these holes. So, you know, if you're an RV manufacturer and you make a mistake, you just drill another hole. And if we cut around with our utility knife, it just makes it a little easier to take off. So you can see here, we have the original cable. It went through and around a square aluminum tube that's part of the structure here. For reference, remember in my original video, the factory pre-wired the camera to the hutch circuit. Well, I think I'm just going to 
snip it off about there and keep this for the future. So I've snipped the wire and this is the part that goes to the inside and I just put a loop in there to make it easier to grab onto and then I'm just going to feed it back inside. So if I ever have to get to it I can just grab that loop and pull it out. And so now we just wire this end. So we've got the wiring done. We have uh, the new wiring spliced in. And I'm going to use this flux shot which I really like. And this is going to be a little tricky to do without getting it all over me. And just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And I think you get the idea. So we got that in. It's kind of interesting with a new camera. They include a ferrite bead, which they didn't in the old one. And you may remember one of my older videos, I suggested using the ferrite bead. So maybe they're watching my videos, I don't know. And then... We want to put the antenna on it. We actually want to tilt it up. I think we're pretty much done with this. We've been traveling about three hours now and the camera really seems to work pretty good. I was a little concerned at first because it was only showing two bars on the signal strength when we were setting. But driving down the road at 70 miles an hour it still shows about two bars. And if you tap it you can put the lines on it. If you tap it again you can view all. Where it shows right camera, left camera, rear view camera, and door camera which doesn't have. Now here's one thing I don't like about it. When you say view all it will do that for maybe a minute and then it goes back to monitoring just one camera and there's no place that I can see in the instructions on how to change the timeout or to prevent the timeout. And further, when it goes to the camera, sometimes it goes to the back camera, sometimes it goes to the door camera that has no signal. And here, this time, it went to the right camera. When compared to the Vision 2 camera, this is a very nice screen. It's a 7-inch screen, much more detailed, much brighter. But the camera selection is kind of hokey and hopefully they'll come out with a new software to help that because it really doesn't work very well. And overall it's nice, but you know, just these little minor things I don't really care for. You can see on the left camera, here is the sidewall of the slide out. But I'm thinking of possibly moving the side cameras to the front position to give me a little more signal strength because the side cameras don't have an external antenna like the rear camera does. And if we look at the right camera, I mean that's an unobstructed view of everything pretty much. And it does have audio. There we go. So you can hear somebody if they're helping you back up. And there's also a motion detection, but I can never get this to work. And every time I set it, all it appears to do is to set the auto off. And I don't know if that's part of it, or if I don't have the right cameras, or if it just doesn't work. But I can never get the motion detector to work. And this does seem to be a little bit on the cheap side. I mean, it's a good picture, but the plastic looks a little cheap. So I was a little disappointed in that as well. And if I'm working on my cameras, I typically use this thing called a trailer light plug by Nappy Camper rather than hooking the truck up and connecting the truck to the trailer. And this way I don't have to do that and I can work on the cameras. And it's just a little shorting pin that shorts the battery to the running light connection.